Free Rain, episode 17. Science says he's gonna go off in the other direction. Hard to believe. That's a lot. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Think it over. Stark pulling all the weight around here recently. This is a new opening? Wow, it is. I forgot. Uh, not all shows are Hunter x Hunter, and some of them update their openings halfway through. I guess now we got the full party. Maybe? Maybe there'll be more. We're still missing the MILF. There will be characters. Who is that? Oh, this may be the one spoiler I have. I've been wondering about this since I started the show. I think at some point I mentioned I had some exposure to Free Run before starting it. In fact, the way I heard about it was somebody was over who was watching it and I wasn't paying attention. I was doing other things. The one scene I saw was like an aerial battle between two cute mages with flowing hair. That's the impression I got. It'll be funny to watch the scene again with like updated information, but it hasn't happened yet. Episode 17, take care. I'm intrigued by this decision. I mean, my hunch is that they're just gonna end up going along, or something will happen that will force them to be together. It would be interesting for Sign to have a solo journey. A lot of, a lot of ways it can, it can go. You learn this in etiquette class? Excuse to hold hands. Pervert. <laughs> Oh, that's such a couple reaction. That is such a couple thing to do. Surprising the other with your cold hands, stealing their body heat selfishly. It's been a whole year since craft. Whoops. Guess we're hunkering down again. Blizzard almost blowing this guy's mustache off. Barely hanging on. So got a lot of time to make this decision. Yeah, the way her face lights up, it's shady old man. Shady old man shops are the best shops. It looks like it's two meters long, but... Yes! What we most need, but it's free rinse that will end up coming in really useful, yeah. <laughs> Imagine when Fern finds out about detergent, I'm waiting for them to like end up fighting an oil monster or something. Yeah, like Sign, I also feel a bit relieved. Party members usually stick together. I mean, I feel like Hunter Hunter is the, the one show that kind of breaks that mold. God, this is the wrong series for this. I'm sorry, but it just occurred to me. Where the, what are Lirio and Kuripika doing right now? <laughs> I like forgot about them in the craziness of the Chimera arc. Stark, push-ups, Fern reading. Sign, drinking, free run dying, or shopping, more accurately. Yeah, it's different though. Like, if you're in the same house with someone, it's better than being far apart. Even if effectively in action and communication, it's exactly the same. Just the knowledge that they're in the next room. We all know. You're the one. You're the parent we go to. That explains the whole thing. That's the relationship. Who could forget? <laughs> That's a whole lot of nothing. お前は俺と違って根はいいやつなんだから正直に気持ちを言えばいい。仲直りしたいのなら、ちゃんと相手にそう話すんだ。フリーレンは喧嘩の仲裁なんかしてくれないぞ。ああ、分かってる。you will? I don't know, I think you just let it blow over. <laughs> it's not a big deal. I think maybe you let Fern stew on this one. Children, please. Side note, whenever Sign puts himself down, like he just said, unlike me, you're good at heart. I get like this pang of there's something weird or dishonest about that. That's a childishness in him. Some people overlead with their faults. They wear their vices as kind of like a, an image thing or I don't know, some kind of emotional buffer for themselves from themselves, maybe, if that makes sense. What is it exactly? Is it a way of excusing not looking at things you would like to improve? Is it a 
way of protecting yourself from feeling too deeply because feelings are scary? Is it a way of avoiding liking yourself because your personal demons or the attachment to them keeps you in a safe place where you're not burned by the disappointment of not living up to the ideal you would have of yourself if you looked at it honestly? <laughs> She likely feels bad about the way she reacted. Wasn't the face. He, I mean, you know damn right. <laughs> These are the warriors that will save the Right, right. Because I sure as hell don't want to deal with it. Why you waste your time on a bad person like myself? Generally, people are mirrors. Right, we've seen this. Bold statement. It's a lot more than fun. Sort of recapping the whole relationship here. Right, right. Like a lot of journeys, it ends up being so much more than what you thought it would, it would be when you started. Sign looking for his friend and finding a lot more. I highly suspect Sign's friend is dead. He probably never became the great hero. People remember him for his bizarre name, not his deeds. This might sound like a cop-out, but I believe it, although I have a lot of trouble articulating it. There are certain things that are indivisible or like the smallest unit can be equal to the largest unit, even if that's somewhat counterintuitive and not how we, we often think about it. So Himmel being this great hero is big in the way we usually calculate. And in a certain sense, that's right. If Sign's friend's legacy ends up being only helping Sign do something great. And Sign is the only one who remembers him. There is something indivisible about that where it's large to the same measure as Himmel's accomplishments. It's like one unit of something that I can't put into words, but across that scale, it's a binary of zero to one. And in a certain sense, it's a mistake to think that Himmel succeeded where the gorilla dude failed. Maybe that indivisible unit is something like purity or beauty or truth or, or, or something. <laughs> Okay, interesting. If real. At least he's not leaving the party to, you know, join the mafia. Eh, what do you want? I really, I really don't know what's going on. I really don't know if this is real or not. Oh, well, we're, we hit part B, so maybe it's real. Stark just continuously, man, he's just doing everything. This will pay off though, right? He does the shopping and the cooking. And I'll bet he'll do the cleaning too. At least he gets first dibs on soup. We need a, he a white priest. Real. Yes, you can. It's not bacteria, it's a divine curse. If only Sign was here! It's not that Freerun is not good at it or can't be good at it, it's that she just doesn't want to do it. We got a memory for that. Cow's attitude. It also seems like Himmel like took a lot of the market share in people's memories of heroes. Oh. Thanks, Mom. Oh. The double-edged sword of mommy's love. Oh, she's become a teenager. Resembly have a mother-daughter moment here. 
And she is. Some roles are permanent, despite age. I would say there's a moment coming where Fern becomes the adult, but she's been the adult for a long time, in some ways at least. So that probably won't come as any huge shock or role disruption. And another Freerun butt shot. We'll also be using the magic of flashbacks. It's interesting to even question. To me, it felt so natural. Just came out of concern and compassion. Who is this guy? We got a flashback for that. Yeah, right. It's just for free run. It's just for her comfort. Actually, maybe Himmel's actions there reflect Freerun's motivations in that situation, where sometimes people give the thing they most want to receive. Himmel clearly starving for Freerun's affection. Maybe Freerun looking for some affection herself. I don't know. Not that it can't be all those things at once. You're interrupting Himmel's big moment. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. When did you become so wise? Not in front of Fern. Sark Freerun alone time is, is really cool to have that bonding. <laughs> it's like sometimes Freerun's kind of cold to him. <laughs> once, well, once again, Sark just ceaselessly working. You can't fight it. Might as well enjoy it. That's an easy 10 years right there. Huh, interesting. Oh, and a new ending too. What is that? Were you lying by a grave? What is the ribbon? Is this claymation? Style's really interesting. Very children's book. Yeah, this claymation. Interesting. I think it's the first for me. And she's now walking on the ribbon. I feel like this is one of those endings that's gonna have so much meaning later, or if I really think about it. Totally could be way, way misinterpreting or overinterpreting this, but weird that there's two shots of Freerun lying down in the same position, one by a grave and one by Fern, who represents a grave. That's especially haunting given the sweetness between Fern and Freerun in this episode, the mother-daughter thing. And like, I remember you as a child thinking about it now. Plot elements aside, risks for the characters aside, that also is just Freeman's life, right? I mean, she's gonna outlive every one of them. That's her fate. And it's a fate that's coming even as she becomes more aware and receptive to her own feelings of love and attachment. As much as Freeman's been through, it's possible that the worst of her days are ahead, even if they also contain some of her best days. This to me feels like somewhat of an odd episode. Usually the episodes, even the two-parters, are very coherent and contain a common theme. This one, it, it strikes me, or I'm guessing, is planting seeds. So there's sign leaving. That obviously is going to come back around. And then part B is like very heavily focusing on a growing attachment between the three characters, the three original characters in the party. It feels like their bond intensified, but I don't know if there was really that kind of standalone message there. So uh, it feels to me like it's build up. There was definitely development. Like I said, we really haven't gotten that much of just Freerun's start. And I, that felt like a moment of real respect and affection. Also, Fern at the end seeming more grateful than usual, having a more positive outlook. And of course, Freerun falling what seems really deeply consciously into like a just an adoration of her surrogate daughter <laughs>